thank you, Ajay. Before we throw it open for questions, I just like to add two things because uh, one thing is about the lifeline consumer and how to give them cheap power. In fact, FOR had uh, done a study and we came with the model regulation. And what we found is that that's not a problem at all. Because if you were to take all the old power purchase agreement where the purchase costs are very low, and if you were to equitably distribute that to all those consumers who are using less than 100 units, will get covered, the tariffs will be very low. You don't have to even give any subsidy from government. But the problem comes with more with the agriculture. We did another study. That study was done by FIRE, not for Forum of Indian Regulator. And what that study showed is that the average cost of supplying to agriculture is two, that is the economic cost, is two thirds of the average cost. Now why it is the two thirds of the average cost is because agriculture is supplied only for seven to eight hours. Now, it is not supplied for 24 hours for the simple reason your power system will not be able to take all the load because the number of pump sets that you have, and if you were to run all the pump sets together, and if especially that happens in the cropping season regarding the uh, kind of crops you are having, it will not be possible. So the demand on the system is less. That's why the cost, average cost is, uh, becomes two thirds. So that being the case, now this is a very difficult issue. Even if you want to do cash transfer, are you going to do the cash transfer to the, all the important uh, farmers who are nothing but the politicians who want the cash transfer? They can pay because in Maharashtra, there are eight districts who contribute to agriculture demand. The feeder separation was mainly aimed at them and they are growing sugarcane, vineyards and bananas. So what are we talking about? Whom are we giving that cash transfer? In fact, it's a small and medium farmer who doesn't get the benefit of that irrigation. So this is a very political issue. So I, we should not just wish away that we'll be able to solve it. It is a matter which the prime minister has to sit with chief minister and agree and because this is what had happened. Because when the electricity act, uh, uh, regulatory commission act came in uh, 98, there was an agreement at the National Development Council on two things, that we will take the tariff setting out of the political purview and then the agriculture tariff will be 50% of the average cost. And that did not happen. And today also it has not happened. Even if in Maharashtra, where we have been increasing agriculture tariff, it is far below than the cost of supply. So I think we will now invite questions. The last speaker, Mr. Ajay Shankar, very beautifully put it. Uh, I still am a little confused uh, because Dr. Deo said that you were the father of the Electricity Act and I was lucky enough to be walking around, I mean, traveling around India with you as the father, along with the other father as well. Uh, the question I have is today, so many years after 2003 Act, which was 2001 Act, if you remember first, um, we have a contradiction. Kerala does not want open access. It's very interesting. The reason they don't want open access is because their revenue is coming from a set of consumers whom they think will migrate. On the other hand, you have other states which have allowed substantial open access. Um, so at the same time, you did mention that competition is not necessarily a very good idea in all situations. So while uh, we are sitting here in Goa discussing this issue, and you very rightly said that it's a decision that has to be taken uh, by the political bosses. But I'm wondering, with you and the time that you spent in the Ministry of Power and all of us you know, working on this, what do you think we did wrong in the Electricity Act 2003? And what is it that we need to do to get efficiency? We've got the transmission efficiency down, distribution efficiency down, uh, inefficiency down to a very good level. But what is missing is consumer choice. What is missing is options. Everything is still a very, this thing. So how do you see this panning out in future? I mean, I'm posing this to you because you left your last remark saying that competition is not necessarily the best thing. So I'm sure you have some answers as to maybe some kind of a dictatorship would be very good. No, no, I, I think as in I didn't make myself clear enough. I was not saying competition is not a good thing. 
what I'm saying is that you can have a simplistic view of competition by separation of carriage and content, where there are two difficulties. One, if the carriage is not robust enough, and the other problem is a slightly bigger problem that separation of carriage and content has worked well in mature markets of the West, where load is not rising substantially. So, so the demand is roughly flat. Now here if demand is to rise at 8, 10, 12, 14% per annum, and if competition in generation, which is where you get the maximum benefit, is to come about through competitive procurement by discoms, then if that competitive procurement process ends, then you are looking at capacity addition only through merchant power plants, which may or may not be such a good idea for a country at this stage of development. So the LXT Act 2003 envisaged competition in generation and understood that the wires business, both transmission and distribution, were natural monopolies, so could remain so, but gave opening for private entry and competitive entry into both transmission and distribution. And it also provided for open access, and in some parts this has moved. Now, if you were to ask me as to what went wrong with the LXT Act, I, I wouldn't say that anything went wrong in the LXT Act. The only thing is that law cannot be a substitute for a political consensus and for political evolution. So we cannot legislate political change, and I think it's not a good idea to try and do it. You see, the 2003 Act had the basic premise that the regulator will eliminate cross-subsidy. In 2005, under the pressure from the left parties, it was, word was substituted, eliminated, it said it will be reduced. That was a political compromise made. But the reality remains is that, uh, that's why I gave in the beginning this example, again I'm repeating, I think, Ari, you were not here. In Maharashtra, 16,000 con consumers, they are all HT consumers, they contribute 23,000 crore revenue. You hire two crore, 10 lakh consumers, they contribute 21 lakh revenue, 21,000 crore. Total budget of uh, MACDCL is 55,000 crore. So if you, can you allow these consumers, only 16,000 consumers, to go away who are contributing 23,000? Now, unless you can address this issue, so the problem with the 2003 Act was that it assumed that such a situation would not be there. So the tariffs will be such increase, and that's not possible. Now, coming to the agriculture, you face a much serious problem. Because in Maharashtra, the first time the MERC raised the tariff for agriculture to 1 rupee 20 paisa. This was from 60 paisa, 1 rupee 20 paisa. And the entire cabinet was asking, can we not add more members to MERC? They say, obviously, then they could control MERC. So this is a very political issue. So let's face that. No? So you are very asking the, anyway, I think we'll have a question. Just make one slight uh, comment. The electricity policy of 2005 envisaged that by 2012, cross-subsidy would be within a band of plus minus 20%. In 2015, we are nowhere near. And then many regulators said that the tariff policy is not binding, it's only one element we'll take into account as we take decisions, et cetera, in the issue. And again, a refresh in your memory, the, there was a regulator, Mr. Rao, I think, in Andhra, who took the law before the LXT Act 2003 very seriously and gave what he thought were tariffs reflecting costs. And then he was gerowed and so on and so forth, and um, thereafter, I think, the other regulators have been far more cautious. No, actually, what happened in Andhra is more interesting. After that, when that cross subsidy surcharge was calculated, the methodology developed by Rao was so interesting that actually, if you took cross subsidy uh, open access, you had to pay more, much more than what we are paying today. So, right from the I've even show, it was a non-starter. Yes, sir. I am Anand Kumar. <coughs> I am representing Meghalaya. I am a regulator in Meghalaya, sir. Uh, in most of the presentation, I saw that you refer to regulatory reforms. 
and said that the, there should be tariff reform. The tariff should be cost reflective. Even the law also says the tariff should be cost reflective. Now I would like to share my concern with the participant and the uh, who are here that in spite of regulatory you know, initiatives or intervention, like my experience, what I had in Meghalaya, in four years, I passed five tariff order, and all before 31st March, with a tariff rise of about eight to nine percent every year. Now the revenue, what they are earning, it is now being doubled. The issue is that the regulator is allowing those costs which is prudent. Now the major issue is the ATNC losses, the TND losses. Now as a regulator, I made a trajectory for them that okay, you have to reduce the losses by about one to 1.5 percent every year. Now what happened? The result is that there was no improvement in the losses. Now you have said that there should be accountability. Now what happened that the tariff is reflective only the portion which we had allowed. Means suppose I have allowed them 20 percent losses, but their actual losses is suppose 30 percent. So there is must there would be a gap, and that gap would be reflected in your financial statement of accounts. So in spite of you know regulatory reforms and everything we are talking of, the the crux of the problem is the losses. If we do not control the losses, then there will be no you know reforms in the country or in any state. That is my experience. I do not know uh, if you want to. Hello. So there are two issues which come to my mind, which contribute to this. One is the gap between communication between the regulator and the utility, and the trust deficit which was talked about uh, of regulator and utility. And the second is the political interference. Because I don't think any regulator by choice would not want to achieve the targets uh, which are given to them. So that, that's my view. Yeah. Um, good afternoon. My name is Gopal Shiksena. Uh, my question is addressed to the entire panel. Um, I'm talking in the context of the last 25 years, where from the first IPP policy that was announced in 1991, where from the first IPP policy that was announced in 1991, to now the proposed amendments of carriage and content to relate, uh, to, to largely uh, set the tone, and where we talked of the successive phases of privatization, franchises, whatever, which were never, which have never been successful in one sense of the word. Three aspects which need to be deliberated upon. How do you reduce the aspect of uh, the cross subsidy, which Mr. Ajay Shankar referred to, because unless you refer, unless you bring in cross subsidy down, you are going to have a problem on mixed feeders, and carriage and content can never go get going in that context. And most of our feeders are cross feeders. The second is that when you come to a situation of being able to reduce cross subsidy down to twenty percent, for instance. The issue is how do you make content free? Because you can put a band on it. But then the people with marginal paying capacity, the incumbent licensee is going to have a huge problem servicing his own requirement. And the third problem, which I think is very important, is how do you plan for power procurement? These are three challenges which we have raised several occasions. And yet, I don't see any light at the end of the day. Thank you. Babu Babel. Uh, my company runs a uh, retail business in England, probably the only Indian company running. We have 400,000 customers in England supplying gas and electricity. When you're talking about carriage and content separation, and you talk about mature markets, I think one basic fallacy is when you talk about an open market, the tariff is decided by the retailer. Are we prepared to do that in India? That the retailer would decide the tariff, number one. Number two, the wholesale risk that we're talking about, we've heard from the morning the wholesale risk seems to be enormous. This will add to the complexity when you decide tariff and unknown wholesale risk. Third important thing is the, uh, you know, on, on, on losses, 
wheeling charges or what is called uh, uh, distribution use of system charges in England will be a small percentage, whereas the losses are much higher. So the revenue of, of the wires company will go down and the losses would be pretty significant. Number four, who will own the meters and who will manage them? Because that's a very important element in that, who will provide that service. The, and other more important part is we talked about all this, where is the customer education going on here? About what ails power sector and who's educating the customer? What's your but, question? So my question is, how, how are we framing policies here? All the major uh, contributors are here, power producer, distribution companies, regulators. How does the voice go to the government who form the policy, and this is then added, or is a sewer motor decision taken about a policy and then uh, a decision is taken? No, I don't think we are that disorganized as a nation, but Mr. Mehta can perhaps give a nice anecdote on how government hears. Mr. Mehta, I'm talking about next life, so I'm, I'm hoping in my next don't life. Don't worry, he talk about this one too. Mehta Saab, please respond to your Ki sarkar decisions kaise leti hai? See, the decision-making process is very transparent and fair. The problem is after the decision is made, the implementation, how do you appropriate responsibility? Somewhere I think that line has been diluted between the political leadership and the bureaucracy. The bureaucracy is trying to now encroach upon the political space. And the political space is trying to encroach upon the bureaucracy. A bureaucracy strongly feels, nahi nahi nahi, cross subsidize mat karo. Free electricity nahi dena. Is that your role? No. That is for the politician to decide. Let him decide. If he thinks nahi, sabko free bijli deni hai, to sabko free bijli, just tell him kaise de sakte hai, ya nahi de sakte hai. That's where the whole confusion is coming. And then what we try to do is, the politician has said something, and then we try to invent ways of skirting that. So it's not basically decision making process that is a problem. The problem is that we try to find a solution which goes around the problem. Or finally we say, yeah, yeah, problem to hey, and nobody can solve it. Let's only discuss in seminars and forget about it. Do you understand the Indian ingenuity? Brilliant. Last mind. question, I think. Harry, last question. Yeah, yeah, of course. Please. Please identify yourself, sir. You're not working? IIT professor, you're not working. I say sound management, you better wake up, huh? We're all highly sensitive to this. Yeah, this is Anup Singh from IIT Kanpur. Um, I'd like to take forward from what uh, just the previous uh, gentleman from the audience he has. See, who is going to be most influenced by reforms? There are two big political class stakeholders. One is consumers, other is the employees. And these are the two stakeholders we never sold the reform. If it happened somewhere in UK or any other country, I, I happened to meet some of the people who were there in the electric board in UK. The employees were informed through newsletters every fortnightly, every month, what was happening to their company, and why it is being done. Similarly, consumers were informed through a variety of things. In our case, we never sold it. We never tried to tell the consumer. So now there is a trust deficit that if you are going to set up a meter, I know next time you will send a meter. Bhi lagao. So that's what we're trying to, we have earned that reputation. Today, if we have to learn something about any kind of choice I'm available in telecom, do I need to go to a telecom company, a telecom minister? No, the local guy, he is so friendly, I'll ask him how many tariff things are there and please give me the best one. We have really feel, I really feel we have failed there. Apart from all the problems they are there, we never sold the reform to the, these two important stakeholders. And that's the reason it's not becoming a success. But isn't that in itself a reform, the local guy? Yes, JDK. You want to respond? So Anyone, please, uh, uh, who I'm want to interfere in the panel? Most welcome to react if you want. I'm J.D. Kulkarni, editor of Power Watch. We I can't see you. We want to see you. So good looking. I'm yeah. J.D. Kulkarni, editor of Power Watch magazine. I just have a simple question. You know, I've been told that uh, discoms are making losses and... Uh, the Hold on. Before, before you ask that question, I must tell the audience, J.D.K. is ex-startup power for the last 35 years. Now he's asking the question. Yes, sir. Shoot. <laughs> Sorry. So uh, the question was, that if the discoms are making losses, most of the losses I was told by these discoms are because of the interest burden from the banks, PFC, REC, whatever it is. Now, is it true that the, it is a uh, major portion of it is because of the interest? And if it is an interest, 
REC's, PFC, and banks, everybody is in a profit. So I just wanted to know whether it is true. Anybody, either from the dais or otherwise, if you can explain it to me. You see, the reason is very simple. Yes. If you take Rajasthan, for five years, they did not have tariff revision. Now, you will wonder, how could a utility function if they were not the tariff revision? So it was a very happy situation. The banks were giving them short-term loan. So every year, you used to return the loan, take higher loan. Banks were being paid interest. And that's how there is a 12 to 13 percent is the interest rate with all the accumulated. This is the situation. Similar thing is in Tamil Nadu. And that's what had happened. So that entire FRP scheme was that the state government will take 50 percent of that loan. We will issue bonds. 50 percent banks will be asked to adjust. But what has happened is that even that adjustment has not taken place. So we are again back to that. See, again, one of the things about this decision making is the federal system. What has happened is the Electricity Act 2003. Ajay Shankar, they did go to states, they discussed it. But the reality is that since I was Secretary of Energy in Maharashtra, I don't think in Maharashtra anybody really understood what that Electricity Act 2003 was. Because we're working on it, sir. We're still I trying. <laughs> that, that's the interesting thing. Right. And now, when it comes to the new amendments, I don't think the states have understood really what the carriage and content is. But only one thing is that they all were alarmed. So they told the standing committee of the parliament that it's too early to do this. Give us five years. After five years, we'll do it. So that's why the, now the new amendment, the amend they have made the change. They said, after five years, we'll take a call. So that's where we are matters. Uh, JD, no, just to my add question, question was different. Sorry, go ahead. What I'm saying is, if it, if it is majorly because of the interest burden which we are talking about, is the government taking it from one pocket and giving it to the another pocket? I mean, that's the, I mean, is it only because of the interest burden or it's really an issue? That's all I wanted uh, to ask. Can I just react to that? There's a recent yeah. article you must read which tells you that Greece, which has gone bankrupt, had a debt of 148% of its GDP. Japan, which has almost 300% of its GDP, is not bankrupt. So it's all about management of debt, if that helps you address yeah. your concern. I mean, management of how you manage your finance. So borrowing money is a good idea, but also how you manage the borrowing and how you flow it around. As uh, he said, you know, you repay and you make your repayments and then it floats. That's what it is. Okay, we're running out of time, guys. Uh, yeah. One thing, I mean, Sorry. like I made in my presentation, the things are very clear. Like if the sector is incurring a loss of 70,000 crores, I mean, either it can come from consumer or it can come from the government revenues. You see, the sector has to sustain and further, if you want to make further progress, further investments to have come. Now, I mean, ultimately, whatever comes from the government kitty is also your money only. It comes to the taxpayer only from a selected people. So, I mean, you have to balance it out. I mean, and the Electricity Act provided upfront that the government wants to subsidize the particular section. They are free to do it and you pay upfront subsidy. So, I think... That balance but has they don't to do that, like whether you want to do it from the government route or you want to do it from the consumer route. No, no, see, government cannot do it where the state government have got the Fiscal Responsibility Act. So they are, they are restricted. Four percent is the limit. Otherwise, they are overdrawn by the will be stopped. So that's why it's much easier to pass it on to the discount. But they should do it. So one one of the reasons, uh, Mr. Kulkarni, is that uh, this concept of regulatory asset is a huge burden on the consumer. He uses that money to put in the deposit. Assuming that the low-end consumer is only in the saving deposit, he gets 4%, 5%, 6%, whereas the same is being funded by the corporations to be recovered from him at maybe 10, 12, 15%. So that's a huge, huge burden. But sir, all those corporations are in profit. I mean, that's the only... So only what one. do you mean by profit? I mean, most of them are... It's, 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 it's going to the bankers in the system, you see? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Guys, I know this is going out of control. No, no, I, sir, I'm sure you do, but I, I'm sorry. Uh, I have to put the guillotine here. <laughs>